Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jasmine. So today I've got another franchise zoo video for you here in Lakefield Zoo. And this is what we did last time. We built this gift shop here and we've even mostly filled out the interior as well. And then we redid the cassowary enclosure over here. This is also what it looks like from the back or from the zoo entrance. And then I actually made some changes to the fences around the zoo off camera. So first of all, I went round and changed some not all of the old timber fencing to this new version it's pretty similar in fact it's basically the exact same design just with some different colored pieces because I wanted the wood tones to match the rest of the zoo's theme so it's different here here and then I also added this which is a new fence pretty similar to what it was before but I just thought I'd let you know and then I've also added a couple of sort of backstage fenced off areas so I created a taller fence which is using all of the same objects in case you're interested yeah it's just the sort of long planet zoo planks which are recolorable and then these wooden poles as well in fact I just want to add another one here yeah and I just wanted to fence off some areas because here I will fill in this with some backstage blueprint objects eventually I've definitely got one for a dumpster that I want to use I've got ones for like crates and things like that as well just to like fill in this area the guests and the keepers can't actually walk there there's no pathing it's just filler and then I also added a similar fence here and this is a new fence as well I've still got a bit of fencing to redo over here near the monkey enclosure but we can do that this episode at some point because I was thinking of adding a new enclosure over here next to the monkeys I'll just unbox this monkey and then we got some research let's see what that is oh yeah so we're pretty much complete with our Indian PFAR research so that's really good that is one thing I really want to do this episode is go through and just make sure that all of the habitats have education by them because our education rating is really low and that's basically because I've got no education boards out I wanted to sort of work out what the design would be for those I've sort of put it off but we should definitely get that done this episode I think speaking of education I did have an idea to increase the education throughout the zoo and that was to go into the ticket stall and make this audio guide free because I'm assuming this audio guide is a form of education, right? I mean, correct me if I'm wrong down below. Oh no, it actually costs us money. So, well, let's make it 75 then. So it's as low as possible and hopefully that will have a positive impact on the education. And then we also had this notification that everything in this information center is too expensive. So I might go through and lower some of these as well so we could lower that to five lower that to 18 26 and then the umbrellas can stay the same and we can review this later and see if that has had a positive impact on our guests something else I wanted to do was to go through each animal's enclosure and see what their enrichment is like because I noticed when we were redoing the cassowary enclosure that they were getting bored of some of their enrichment so I want to make sure that they're all happy it says that this could be more actually so we need a toy enrichment I don't think we've got one of these so that might be nice how is that now oh, okay that's great we only just added those so they should be fine how about these meerkats okay so they're bored of their tennis ball and they're bored of their sprinkler they haven't got one of these though I don't think so that might be nice we need some more still so how about this bubble machine can't go anywhere unless we use this water jet one instead yeah let's put it there still not enough still need some more so i guess it's gonna have to be this bubble maker isn't it then okay there we go yep they need some more too so they're not happy with this cardboard box oh they're not happy with the food either we could switch it for a mud one and that is enough toys for them but they need more food enrichment how about that cool so they're happy now let's just check on these monkeys as well their food enrichment is fine but their toy enrichment is not they're sick of this ball <laughs> and probably this ball as well i reckon oh so we could give them this musical keyboard that's cute there we go 
and they still need some more so we could have this ice ball for them that in there still need more <laughs> how about mirrors okay perfect so that's that sorted i still don't know why it's not affecting this i'm not quite sure how that works oh yes and as well as the fences earlier we also changed some roofing off camera here and i changed the roofing over here just to match some of the other roofing it looks like our pea fowl are about to mature whilst they do that I'm gonna put them on contraceptives I think so that we avoid any inbreeding and oh goodness these guys have been breeding like mad again so maybe let's just sell them whilst we're here let's just quick trade all of these these are all captive births oh that one's a really good one so we'll keep you how about that is inbreeding a thing with exhibit animals i don't know that it is necessarily so let me know if you know down in the comments but i'll just leave it like that for now wow we've got a lot of male peacocks at the minute which is really good because they're the prettiest <laughs> So how about we give contraceptives to all of the ones we've bred and then of those ones. We've bred a lot of gold ones so I definitely want to keep this one and a white male one but we could sell you and you. We could also sell you because we've already got one male white one. We could sell you, we bred you. Okay they aren't endangered i don't think they're endangered anyway i might be wrong but how about we just quick trade them so let's have a look at this white male then because i'm really excited to have him as an addition to our zoo oh i really want to see him with his feathers out we'll see if we can catch him like that another time or later on i did have some names for these guys and for some more animals but i'll probably wait until the end of the episode because i tend to film over a couple of days and i might get more comments in over the course of the episode so um, yeah i'll leave that until the end My my original plan was actually to switch these guys over so that the peacocks were in here and the cassowaries were in an enclosure here and then the kangaroos would be next to them. So I might do that this episode but I'm a bit nervous that this won't be big enough for the peafowl because there are more of them so they might need more space. They only need 372 meters squared actually which I think might even be less than the cassowaries. Yeah no that's perfect so I might just do that now actually. Yeah so let's send these to to the trade center and then let's move all of our peafowl into here and then we'll need to rename this and then rename our work zone as well so we don't get confused and i feel like this doesn't have a keeper hut and it should this doesn't have a keeper either so we'll assign that as the keeper hut or actually let's assign this as the keeper hut and now we'll eventually add their own one meerkats doesn't have one that needs one we've also got a lot of unassigned staff <laughs> i did think maybe we should rename some of our staff that are going to be dedicated to the research as like their first name is research or put an r in front of their name or something like that so we know who they are and then when i'm assigning them work so I assign the right people. Oh, the P file have been added. So let's change that to P file. And then let's move over these two into here. Oh, I feel really sorry for the cassowaries now. They're going to really hideous enclosure. <laughs> but we will redo that this episode. That's kind of what I want to do next, I think, before we do anything more interesting. Hey, so these guys seem to be enjoying their new enclosure. He's just chilling over here inside. Bless him. They need more grass though, and they need slightly more enrichment items. Right, let's add this little herb thing for them. Oh, and that's enough for them. So that'll do for now. And then they could switch out for the mirror mobile later. Oh, look, it's not in the best lighting, but he was giving us a show. So now I think I will go through and make sure that we've got the stingiest salaries for each of our workers because I've not been very organised at doing it as we go along. And I couldn't work out how to do it last episode, but I've just figured it out. So if I click on this locate button and then it sort of pops up over here, I just didn't realise because it was on this overview instead. Okay, so I've gone through all of those now and they are all on the minimum salary and they're still happy. So that's 
that's really good. Some of these have got high work load. I'm wondering if these are on research. Yeah, conducting research. So let's just train them up maybe. Keeper. Oh, this one doesn't have a work zone. Is it just a spare? Hang on, what's missing? We don't have a cassowaries. Okay, cassowary keeper. See, I've already trained them up. They really should be fine, but perhaps let's train them up again. We'll wait for that to sort of settle down because I've just switched them over so it might just be that. Oh, and these vendors still have a really high workload. So that could mean that we need more staff, that we need to train them up, or we need more shops basically, because then that will mean that the queues for each shop are smaller. How about we train up the ones that we haven't trained yet to sort of match the rest of them? That might bring the workload down. What I also want to do is sort out work zones. So we've got work zones per keeper, but then we need to think about work zones for all of the other staff members. So I'm going to create a vendor work zone and it's going to include all of the shops and then this staff room and hopefully that won't overcrowd that staff room. So I'm going to call it entrance vendors because we might have sort of more vendor work zones in the future. And then let's go to our vendors and assign them all the entrance vendors work zone. Right, now I want to go to see who is researching. The you are one that's researching. So I'm going to rename them with an R in front of their name. <laughs> So Rosanna is also going to have an R in front of her name. So those are our researchers. And then I'm gonna do the same for the mechanic. So Jared is researching, it looks like. Oh, Jared's the only one that's researching. So we could get someone else researching. How about just the new world theme for now? You can't really go wrong with that, can you? So that's Ellen. We'll go back here and rename Ellen. There we go. So what would the researchers need in their work zone? If I were to set up a work zone for them, Research centre, is that for both vet and mechanical research? Well, we could probably tell from going to the mechanics in workshop. So the mechanics research in the workshop and the vets also research in the workshop. Huh. This has got some information on each of them. Hang on. So research centre. Research centre is used by vets. Yes. The workshop is used by mechanics to perform research. Oh, so I don't know why the vets were using the workshop. That's just weird. I'm going to go through and change these work zones so that they are all the same staff room and then we're going to label it the keeper staff room. So let's make this one the keeper staff room. Ah, this is what I wanted. I've never used this before. This is really handy. So let's call this the keeper staff room. This one is going to be the vendor staff room and it's got a capacity of four so that's handy so that's got seven staff members assigned to it but they're not all going to be using it at once keeper staff room will have six i think we've got six keepers so that's fine this can be for vets caretakers and educators together vet educator and caretaker staff room in fact we might need to change it so it's staff room one or staff room entrance actually because when we extend the zoo we'll have to have more of these for a different zone so this can be like the entrance zone okay so this is mechanic and security staff room entrance and this is vendor staff room entrance we could give them perks for this one this is the vendor one let's give this the vendor related one the only one that we need really is this vendor one because they're under a little bit of pressure right now okay now that i've done that i'm going to go through and change all of these work zones so that they are only the keeper because these are all keeper work zones the keeper staff room perfect so that's all of those work zones sorted we want one more for vet research. So they're gonna have both of these and then the vet staff room. Yeah, so that's the staff room that we want. And that should be everything they need. They just need these two research centers and that. So that's fine. We want one for mechanic research. So they need the workshop and mechanic staff room there. So we'll call that mechanic research. Then we want to create a work zone for all mechanics in this entrance zone and then all vets in this entrance zone. So we're gonna call this one vets entrance 
treatment and this is the vet staff room. They are also going to need the surgery, aren't they? It's a quarantine, it's a surgery, they'll need the animal trade centre as well, all of these enclosures two exhibits as well. So I think that's everything the vets need. So that's the vet's entrance. And then we need one more for mechanic entrance. Yeah, mechanic staff room here. And then they need, well, they just need everything. These two ATMs, toilet blocks, these two enclosures. I don't think mechanics needs to be linked to, well, put them to the workshops as well, just in case they need to work in there for some reason. Yeah, I don't think mechanics need to be linked to keeper huts and other buildings. Those buildings are always fine, aren't they? Does this, that must need fixing at some point, I'm sure. Okay, well, we'll see how this goes, but that should be fine, I think. So that's the mechanic work zone. Now we need to assign our staff to the work zones. So vets will be vet's entrance. This is a researcher, so vet research. Keepers are all individually assigned. They've not got a work zone at the minute, okay. Mechanic entrance and then research. Security guard, they've not got a work zone because they can go everywhere. Caretakers, they're everywhere at the minute and vendors have their one. Let's think about caretakers. Oh, the mechanics will need these as well, really, won't they? Let's edit it to include those. And the caretaker, they're going to be everywhere because they need to clean everywhere, basically. Caretaker entrance. Actually, we could call it caretaker and security entrance. There we go. And then we could add the security to the caretaker entrance too. And this poor, lonely educator doesn't have a work zone. Oh, look, they're giving a talk right now. Should we watch it just for a little bit? <laughs> I wonder if they'll throw food in or anything like that. I've never actually seen them do this. What does this mean? Vet work zone does not include a habitat. Well, I know it doesn't because they're researchers. Oh, fine. If it's going to be like that, I'll get rid of the vet research one. We'll just add these two research centres to the vet's entrance one. And now we need to add these ones. Okay. And we've got some mechanic research complete. Oh, wow. So we've completed the Europe theme completely. So our other researcher can be getting on with habitats because I really want that one-way glass. Oh, no, barriers. Sorry. Oops, here, barriers. So I was going to add some more education talk points. This might be a good spot. So we've got one for the Babarusas, one for the Meerkats. We could have one here. Why not? Let's put one here. Because like I say, our education is terrible at the minute. And we want to change this to Babarusas, obviously. And this says March. Let's go for May. And then here we want the monkeys. And then... July then that gives it a month's gap in between and seeing as we've got multiple talk points now we could add another work zone I feel like I'm just on a work zone roll <laughs> so we've got those three and okay cool so this is educator entrance and then I think I also need to add those education talk points to the mechanic entrance okay right so I'm going to do a bit of building in a minute <laughs> But first, I think I might go on to the trade centre and look for some giant anteaters because that's the animal I want to add next. They need roughly 600 metres squared. So that's actually quite a lot. And one to two. So one male, one female, basically. So yeah, let's get one male, one female. Well, we'll have to get you because you're the only male. This one looks fine. And then I'll put them in the quarantine so they can be getting ready for us whilst we build. So I might do some building now. We've got to redo a few bits and pieces. I want to redo some of this fencing. I'm going to add the giant animal anteater enclosure here but first I'm going to build over here for the cassowaries. Okay so I'm going to start building and I'll catch up with you when we are finished. Okay so we are in build mode now and first up I just wanted to quickly apologise for how long we spent on zoo management in this episode so far. I have just finished editing the first half of this video and I think I spent like 20 minutes just on zoo management things so hopefully you still enjoy that sort of content and you're not bored. We did spend a long time setting up the work zones for staff as well and I'm aware that that is not the most engaging content to have to watch so sorry about 
of that but it is something that I've been meaning to get sorted for a long time now and I just wanted to include the footage of me sorting it out because I'm always curious about how other people organise their work zones and it might be helpful to some people so I have included it all so sorry if you find it boring but also feel free to give me feedback if you see me do anything stupid when I was setting those up. For example I noticed after I'd done it that I had accidentally assigned the caretakers to more than one staff room so I'll probably go back and make sure that they only have access to the one staff room that I've assigned to caretakers but also if you know whether I've missed any important buildings or areas in any of the work zones maybe that the mechanics need access to or something like that or whether the mechanics don't need access to be linked to the education talk points for example then just let me know down in the comments below because that would be really helpful but I'm really glad we've got that done now so hopefully next episode will be a little bit less intense in terms of zoom management also I wanted to say a big thank you because the other day we reached 2,000 subscribers on YouTube which is absolutely amazing I feel like it was just a couple of months ago that we reached 1,000 subscribers for the first time but it wasn't I just checked and I think we reached 1,000 in July but it was over Christmas that we monetized the channel so it feels like not so long ago since we got 1,000 subscribers because one of the like criteria for monetization was 1,000 subscribers so that's why it feels so recent but yeah it's still it's happened so quickly compared to my previous channel growth so thank you so much and the majority of that is down to Planet Zoo fans as well because these videos just grow so much quick on my channel for some reason compared to Sims videos and things like that I think it's just because it's a newer game and there's less content out there for Planet Zoo than there is for Sims so it's less competitive on YouTube but still thank you so much for all of your support I really appreciate it I still want to arrange a stream at some point I've been saying that for ages now but I'm a little bit preoccupied with trying to sort out my house at the minute because I'm in the process of buying a house for the first time and it's very stressful and taking up a lot of my time so I'll probably arrange something or try and sort that out after that's complete which should hopefully be soon-ish <laughs> fingers crossed that gets sorted and I also really want to arrange some sort of planet zoo collab or community project as well at some point and I've mentioned this already in my discord server so this is where if I do a collab or something it will be organized eventually so feel free to go and join my discord server if you want to get notified when I organize it and that is linked in all of my video descriptions so if you yeah just go to this video description down below I will have a link to my discord server so you can go and join that but if you have any ideas of preference of what sort of project you want to take part in it will probably be a build collab because I haven't done one of those yet so that would be really nice to organize but yeah if you have any preference just let me know down in the comments below and I will see what ideas are most popular. For those of you who watched my last two episodes of this series as well I have finally uploaded a blueprint for the finished zoo entrance for this zoo. It doesn't include any of the interior objects and that's because this would have made the item count way too big for a blueprint but I have included the entire exterior for the entrance including the gift shop that we did last episode and so this is now linked in that last video that I posted in the series which I think it was maybe episode six if I'm correct so that was the episode with the gift shop so if you see the word gift shop on the thumbnail then you'll know you've got the right one and that will like I say yeah be it down in the description box for that video and if you really want a blueprint for the interior to that build then for the time being I've linked all of the blueprints that I use for the interior of the gift shop in the video description again but if enough people ask for it then I might look into making a blueprint just for the interior objects or at least like separated sections of the interior that you could put together so let me know if you're interested in that or not but that building interior is not complete anyway at the minute because we're kind of waiting on a counter system in planet zoo so it might make sense for us to just wait until that feature comes out and then i can create an entire interior blueprint for that in one go so yeah just let me know if you have any preferences there and in this video you will see me using some custom fencing and also some custom education boards too and i will eventually add both of these things into a fence engagement 
play pack and then a separate education pack as a theme that's used across this zoo. But I haven't finished either of these things yet. This is something that will probably be a long-term project. So it might be a while before these get uploaded to the Steam Workshop. But just bear in mind that that will be coming if you do want access to those things. And I'll also try and add the giant anteater habitat build that I obviously make in this video to the workshop in time for this video to come out as well in case anyone wants to download it. So that might be another way to access those fences if you like what you see. Then also off camera the meerkats were getting really stressed because there were too many guests at one point so I switched the glass panels in their build to one way glass and this seems to have fixed the problem temporarily. It's not always a problem it's just when there happens to be a really large crowd around them it was happening because they've been fine up until now so hopefully this helps long term but if it gets worse because I know the meerkats aren't actually a confident animal and they are in quite a crowded area so if this problem does get worse in future episodes then we might have to switch them out for the prairie dogs or something like that who are more confident or change around their enclosure a little bit more so they have more space to hide in. But yeah it's a shame because I've always thought of meerkats as a really confident animal and they always seem to be an animal whose enclosure is always put towards the front of zoos as well and also one that is very exposed and that you can just look down into like the one I've built here. So yeah it's a shame if we'll have to change that in the future because I think they really do suit where they are in the zoo but yeah that's a problem for another day we'll think about that later and then also I obviously will eventually place the giant anteaters in this zoo as well this episode and they were really struggling with the amount of space that I originally gave them when I first put them in and I think this might have been partly because of their hit box so some of the plants and the foliage that I added in their enclosure will have made their enclosure a little bit smaller than it looks or their traversable area a little bit smaller than the enclosure looks itself but also they just seem to need a much larger enclosure than I gave them. I did check how much they needed before I started building but I just underestimated what that looked like when I had started. So off camera I went back and I extended their enclosure a little bit which helped a little bit but it's still way too small. They're still in the orange for their space level and also they are not a very confident animal with guests so we might have issues with them getting stressed in future episodes as well. So I did think about this and I did add one-way glass to their indoor enclosure so hopefully that keeps them happy if they do need to hide but if this gets worse we might have to switch around their enclosure a little bit. I tried to give them lots of areas where the guests are sort of pushed further back away from the fence so I've used a lot of double fencing and some hedges and things like that to just create that gap between the animals and the guests and then the only time that the animals are sort of directly able to see the guests is when they're in that outdoor enclosure bit and the guests are under the shelter so that's like the only bit that they're sort of directly able to see each other obviously the guests can see them through the one-way glass but the animals can't see the guests so hopefully that's not a problem but like I say we might need to change that and there are a couple of things that we can do if stressed animals does become a problem in our zoo so we can fix it by adding calming music for the animals so that they don't get the stress so like rainforest sounds or whatever their natural habitat might be and then also we can add some please be quiet signs throughout the zoo as well to encourage guests to be quiet around animals that are easily stressed so that might help and I haven't added either of those things yet but we could add them in the future if we need to and I've also mentioned already that by the end of this episode I managed to finish building a couple of custom education boards for the animal enclosure so I start off building them for the anteaters and then I sort of place them around the rest of the build and this is something that I've been meaning to do for a long time now and for ages we just haven't had any animal education balls out on display because I've been putting this off but we do manage to get them done for each enclosure during this episode at least but the other thing I wanted to get sorted but didn't manage in this episode was the general education balls and possibly also bill balls as well and someone added a really handy comment last week that we could sink down any functional education balls like the ugly big functional education balls into the ground so that the guests can still use them but we can't see them and instead we only place the billboards or screens that we want to see above the ground so that might be a handy idea I don't know if that works or not but this was because I mentioned that I don't like the design for those general education boards and yet we do need a lot of them across the zoo to help with our education level so yeah hopefully we'll be able to sort that out next episode that's what I'm thinking if I get time I would also try and start to design some general billboards as well 
well, things like ticket signs and posters for the zoo entrance, but this always takes a while, so this might have to be a bit of a longer term project. So yeah, we'll see about that, but that's something that will come in future episodes. I just wanted to let you know that we don't manage to get that done this episode. And in terms of what we're going to see next in this zoo, so future animals, future ideas for the zoo, we got a few comments last episode saying that people really like the idea of having lemurs, sun bears, otters and kangaroos. So I'm really happy about that because I love all of those animals and I was hoping to add them in the zoo. So I will try and make these animals a priority for our next couple of episodes. Depending on how confident they are, I have an idea for having the sun bears in an enclosure next to a restaurant. So that's something I want to have relatively early on in this zoo entrance within this sort of entrance zone that I mentioned earlier. And so we can put the sun bears in an enclosure next to the restaurant so that when the guests sit down to eat, they can just look out at the sun bears next to them. So that might be a really nice idea. And then in terms of the giant otters, they will probably go in next to the giant anteater enclosure that we are just making in this episode. And then the kangaroos, like I said, will go next to the cassowary. So that will be a, like an Australian area over there. We could even add koalas at some point too. And for the lemurs, I will try and have a couple of different types of lemurs in the same enclosure. I don't know if the black and white lemurs, I can't remember what they're called, but the new ones got added in that update. I can't remember if they are allowed to go in the enclosure with the other lemurs as well. I know the sort of ring-tailed and the red ruffed can go in the enclosure together, but I want to prioritise having the black and white lemurs in this zoo because I haven't played with them since they were added in that update. So I really want to add them first and then we'll sort of worry about what other lemurs we do or do not add after that. But yeah, it would be nice to have a couple of lemurs and if it's possible, I really want to create a walkthrough exhibit for the lemurs as well or at least have a raised walkway for the guests to stand on as they view the lemurs as they climb. So that would add like a nice bit of height variety as well. So we'd have to be careful about not using any climbable objects for that though. I do I do need to bear that in mind. But that's what I had planned for next episode. So hopefully you like those ideas. Let me know what you think of them down in the comments below. If you have any other requests or as always name suggestions for any of the animals, obviously we've got some new animals added to this episode, those giant anteaters. So if you want to name those and leave your suggestions down in the comments below. Hopefully they'll have some giant anteater babies as well soon. So <laughs> that would be really exciting. Exciting. But I think we're pretty much finishing up now in terms of build mode. So I'm going to head off and I will catch up with you back in real time. Okay, so I finished building and I got a lot done. So this is obviously an enclosure for the giant anteaters who are over here. Let's sort of recap on what I've been doing in the speed build. So we managed to get a lot done actually. After switching these two around, I sort of finished off this cassowary enclosure. I added this building over here, which is a bit of an indoor enclosure for them. It's pretty similar to the peacock enclosure that I did. I have sorted out all of the work zones off camera. I also went around and added some of these custom education boards that I made. I'm really happy with how they turned out. I've got one version here, which is low enough for the guests view at their level. And then we've got these sort of standing ones that sit behind the fence, which are a little bit taller and a little bit wider. So yeah, I'm really happy with them. I sort of changed a couple of blueprints that I got off the Steam Workshop. So I will link those down in the description box below in case you are interested in the ones that you saw me download. And then this is our new habitat for the giant anteaters. This took me quite a long time actually. So we've obviously got a keeper hut here and then this fencing links it back to the main facilities staff building. Then the anteaters have got this quite a big indoor space. I was originally planning on having this section back here fenced off as like a staff backstage zone, but they needed more space. We were really struggling with the space. I underestimated it by a lot. So I did extend it and you can see here that they're still in the orange, although their overall welfare is still green. It's like 76%. So that'll do for now. We might consider extending it later on in this series.
series and then this is the rest of the enclosure their little outdoor space so they've got some enrichment items that i've added off camera and then this is a shelter for the guests to view them under just to keep them in the shade keep them cool and also to protect them from the elements because it's been snowing in the game a lot i thought we should really start adding some shelters for the guests to keep them happy also added an education talk point and i've linked this up to the work zones and all of their schedule as well i think it's scheduled for september so that's that i hope you like it the last thing i wanted to do before i go this episode was to name some of our p-fowl because we got some suggestions down in the comments oh goodness and while we're at it we'll just sell some more of these so let's quick trade those but our p-fowl have also been breeding like mad so first up we got a suggestion for a white male p-fowl shen and then we got another suggestion specifically for a white p-fowl to be called winnie so i'll name this one winnie for another one to be called indy so i'll name her indy and then we got four more name suggestions so i'm just going to select the ones that we don't need to keep oh in fact i might name this gold female winnie instead yeah like i said we've got four more name suggestions felix pip abel and augustine so we've got one male here that needs to be named so he can be felix and then we can keep the best females let's name her abel this one pip and then this one augustine okay and then we can quick trade these ones oh we cannot trade some of these why can't we trade them oh because they're young oh that's why <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I was trying to trade them. How about we just label them T for trade at the start of their name. Now that that's done, we are pretty much finished for this episode. How about we just take a quick look at our new animals, the giant anteater, because I've never had these guys in my game before. This is the first time. Oh, and they're already mating. Oh, that's really exciting. Yeah, this is the first time that I'm actually seeing them in my own game. Yeah, I'm really excited to see these guys and see what the babies look like. I don't think I've seen the babies and watch some more of their animations and interactions. But yeah, they're such beautiful animals. I absolutely love them. I remember them being on like a zoo program I used to watch when I was a kid. They were always one of my favourites. Oh, it's curling up to go to sleep. <laughs> Well, that feels like a really good time to sign off with this guy having a nap. So hopefully you like this episode. As always, if you did like it, then please like, comment and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye, everyone.